Hello guys and welcome to another data mine. Today we're going to be going over all of the information for the Ode of the Ever Blooming Crimson event that comes out later today. This is the major UR event for the 7th Japanese anniversary. It'll bring us the Unyu class Carrier Amagi. Humble brag much, but that means that I've called three of the last four URs for the Japanese anniversary streams. So with Amagi being reborn like a phoenix, let's get into this video. Let's first start off by going over some of the things that were mentioned in the live stream before we get into the event today. As expected, we will be getting a ton of skins. Each of the new ships that we'll go over today will get a new skin here, as well as a lot of HMS like Ark Royal, Belfast, and Sheffield. If you don't like what you see here, there will actually be a second wave of skins that are coming in a week. Some of these like Sirius and Bremertons are too spicy to be shown here in full, but it will also include a Musashi skin made by Dishwasher and a new Kashino skin. My personal favorite of this second batch is probably Prince Ruprecht. Let me know in the comments what your favorite new skin is going to be. Oh, I almost forgot. We also get a Hakuryu skin that comes a little bit later in October. This is for the collaboration with the katana making shop that they have in Japan. Speaking of skins that are coming in October, we actually got the cruise pass for next month revealed. Hosho Meta will be the new meta ship revealed with the cruise pass and Sufren is getting the paid skin from it. Last but not least for skins, we are getting three new O skins, which I'm very excited about. Shokaku's getting a new O skin, Fuso's getting a new O skin, and Bismarck is getting a new O skin, which I know many of you will be very excited about. As per usual with the new event, we're gonna get gear skins too, and a new dorm set. On stream, they played around with a bunch of new merch, including but not limited to this quote, mouse pad of Elbe that is literally like almost life size. In other stream news, the thing I'm probably most excited about outside of Amagi coming of course is this reveal. This silhouette spoiler all but confirms that a Tempesta event will be coming this fall and I'm all for it. They also confirmed that a collaboration event with Tula Rue is in the works. It's not High School DxD but it was only a matter of time until we collaborated with an Echi. That about covers all the news from the tweet that I posted. Posted. Also in other PSA news, Amagi CV will operate like Kaga BB and not be able to share skins with her original form like the two versions of ships can. This was expected, I said this on the stream, but it's disappointing and there was a moment there where they actually had a misstatement that said that you could. So I was excited for a second and then they walked that back, unfortunately. Finally, they showed us a little bit more of that 3D animation game mode that they talked about in the Chinese anniversary stream. Not much to say about it other than it's in the works and this is a showcase of their progress. All right, with that all out of the way, we can actually get into the event today. Surprisingly, we don't have any new gears, so we don't have to cover those. Also, they have this little spoiler from the story. It's Akagi Meta and she's a battle cruiser? I don't know. She doesn't actually release today, but her art came in the story and so we're showing her because that's part of the leaks. So we'll start off with the new retro fit that comes today. Maryland will follow her sisters in getting this upgrade that comes with minor stat boosts as well as efficiency upgrades to her battleship guns and anti-air guns. She's also going to improve her first skill which increases the chance of her big seven barrage from 40% chance of triggering to 70% chance of triggering. On top of that the skill will also have an add-on where she can give an aviation damage resistance to another battleship or battle cruiser who has their HP fall below 50%. Also, she will get a brand new skill that gives her a flat 20% firepower boost, which is nice, and then reads, when an allied battlecruiser or battleship hits an enemy, trigger all of the following effects. This has a 20 second cooldown. Her hit stat goes up by 12% for 6 seconds, and she triggers a special barrage where all the enemies hit by this barrage reduce their evasion stat by 10% for 6 seconds. Like her sister ships, I can't say that this makes her good, but it makes her better, so so if you do like this ship, congratulations. Also, it's a free new art. Lovely. All right, let's turn over to the event ships now. And I can't wait any longer. We're going to start with the UR Amagi. She's a carrier I've been waiting for a long time for, and I'm super hyped for this. Her stats look okay. It was expected that she was medium armor. Her HP pool is a little bit lower than I would have liked. I would have liked it to be over 8,000. Her aviation is high, but not that high for a UR carrier. 
it's lower than Harkiryu, which came out over three years ago. Evasion is very middle of the pack, and luck is low, but that's to be expected given the history of this ship. Consolation prize, though, her reload looks pretty decent. And oh boy, do I spot a problem. Looking at her equipment, she only has eight planes. Every other rainbow rarity carrier in the game has nine planes. What garbage is that? It does appear like she has some flexibility, being able to swap out fighters or dive bombers in slot 1 and dive bombers or torpedo bombers in slot 2, but that is still less effective than having a universal plane slot that a lot of the new carriers are getting. Think Admiral Nakamov, Yorktown 2, Implacable. Now I do have to say those efficiencies are really high. 160% on torpedo bombers is great, and 145% is also really good too. For perspective, Admiral Nakamov off has 140% efficiency across the board. So those super high efficiencies somewhat compensate for her having one less plane than every other rainbow rarity carrier. If comparing Amagi with Admiral Nakamov, Amagi has like eight and a half planes compared to her nine if we standardize for efficiencies and damage. Overall, I'm hoping that these mid-tier stats means that she has some really busted skills. Skill number one, plus 15% aviation stat. That's pretty standard a lot of UR carriers have a way to get somewhere around that boost level. Some of them higher like Shinano and Harkiryu with additional ways to boost it, but that's pretty standard. While this ship is afloat, all IJN ships in the fleet, this includes herself, get plus 15% torpedo damage dealt. This includes surface torpedoes, aerial torpedoes, which is torpedo bombers, and submarine torpedoes. So this is very interesting. That's a lot of damage. Let's not forget about the surface torpedoes because that is very relevant. She can buff vanguard ships very well. However, it's very important that she has torpedo bomber buffs here. It tells us that in slot two of her gear, you're almost always going to want to put torpedo bombers on her instead of dive bombers, so you get five of them. And that's a good chunk of damage. It's also all IJN, so if we're using Shinano with her, who is really, really good with torpedo bombers, this is great to pair with. In fact, maybe Imagi will take over Shinano's role as the best torpedo bomber carrier in the game. The second part of this skill is all enemies receive minus 3% firepower, torpedo stat, aviation stat, anti-air stat, and evasion stat. That's a lot of stats. For every stack of the Phoenix Inferno on an enemy, give plus one stacks to this debuff to that same enemy. So this is a debuff that is kind of playing on the original Amagi, which is focused on debuffs like this. Great to see it. It's a lot of stats. We'll have to see how the Phoenix Inferno stacks work because those come later in a different skill, I assume. However, it looks like you get one for free so you're starting at 3% and then it can continue to stack on top of that. It also looks like it will hold for the whole duration of the battle. So every time that it stacks, you get to keep those stacks. All right, let's move on to skill number two. The further away an enemy is from a Magi CV, the more damage this ship deals up to a maximum of 18% damage dealt. The maximum units away is 110. For the record, I hate these type of skills. They're not bad in any way, but I just don't enjoy them and they are kind of frequently used. Anyway, 18% damage boost is nice. And for those of you who don't know what 110 units away is gonna look like, well, if we look at a PVP map, the people at the very far, your opponent's main fleet, is going to be more than that, so that will be full damage here, but the Vanguard fleet for them will not be. If we're talking about PvE, most units will be inside that range, so you'll be getting much less than 18%. Most of the range that your battleships will be firing at is about 70 units away. So while 18% boost sounds really good, you might actually be getting only 12% in reality. Also, this skill reads, when she launches an airstrike, she's going to trigger a special barrage. This is a powerful barrage. It is going to include torpedoes in that barrage, just like the original Magi having torpedoes in her barrage, and those torpedoes will get boosted by her first skill's torpedo damage buff. Final part of this skill reads, if a Magi is afloat, when another fleet enters the battle, 15 seconds after the start of the battle, she's going to trigger a barrage. This is the pretty standard cross-fleet barrage that we've come accustomed to for these UR ships. Good to see it, though. And with that, let's move on to her final skill. Every 12 seconds, 100% chance to trigger a special barrage, 
Phoenix Inferno. Great, this is gonna be what triggers those stacks from the skill number one. All enemies hit by this barrage are debuffed with Phoenix Inferno. This has a max of two stacks and can only be gained one stack every five seconds. For every stack of Phoenix Inferno on an enemy, that enemy takes 15% more burn damage, a max of 30% if you get both stacks. Unfortunately, that just said burn damage, not all damage, but yeah, okay, cool. I don't think Amagi had a great way of adding burn, so you have to figure out a way to put burn on her. Odd. Okay, and for every other IJN ship in the fleet, that's a max of five, of course, decrease the trigger interval of the Phoenix Inferno Barrage by one second, so you can reduce it by five seconds, so that would mean instead of 12 seconds, it's going to be every seven seconds. And if sorted with Akagi and Kaga, minus 50% first airstrike loading time. Oh my god. <sighs> There's so much to unpack in this skill, so let's just take it one step at a time. First of all, we've seen what this barrage looks like on the live stream, so we know it's a full map clear. Like, it is a really good pattern, so we know that. That's good. Two, we know these stacks stick around forever, so that's great. Now we know there's a max of two stacks, so from skill number one, you get one stack for free, and then two more stacks each enemy that it hits, so that gives you a potential of debuff of 9% on any enemy. Weird that it says one stack every five seconds so because of the way that the barrage looks it's actually very feasible that you're going to get hit multiple times so this basically says that you cannot get two stacks from a single trigger of this barrage so you're gonna have to wait for each of them now it also has a huge benefit for being in a full ijn fleet if you're in a full ijn fleet this barrage is every seven seconds that's really good this barrage does a ton of damage actually if we look at the stats related to it and that's great and then of course it's giving the buff that means if you have a full ijn fleet then you can trigger this barrage at 7 seconds and at 14 seconds, which means you can theoretically have a full debuff of the enemy at 9% before she launches her airstrike. That's very good. 9% of all those stats is kind of hard to calculate what that extra damage is going to be. Let's just assume it's going to be somewhere between like 5 and 7% extra damage that she's able to deal. It varies very much based on the enemy that you're targeting though. She also gives a buff to burn damage, but there is no way that she really gets to burn here that I see. Even her barrage is is normal ammo, so not HE ammo. So you're gonna have to use something else to do that. Now, she's very much set up to be paired with other carriers here. And so there's not gonna be a great way to inflict any of that fire. It's not like you're gonna have one of these battleships and a bunch of fire, which means that fire is going to come from the front line, which is not super reliable, and even if it does trigger because it scales off firepower, it's not going to be a lot of damage. So, yeah. Weird there. And then let's talk about the final thing, and this is the one where I'm probably the most upset about this, and most of you probably are not going to care. It's that she has a fantastic airstrike loading time cooldown reduction, 50%, but it's locked behind being put with Akagi or Kaga. Now, that should also apply to Akagi Mew, Akagi Chan, and Akagi Meta if she ever comes out. It should also apply to Kaga BB as well. So you have some options, but all of them suck. And I, it's like, I, I want the cooldown reduction. I know that for certain bosses and timing, you don't want the cooldown reduction. Ideally, you would be able to turn it on and off like a switch by, you know, equipping a certain equipment or like this paired with another ship, except here we're paired with ships that are very locked down. It's not a very broad one. For example, if this said IJN, ship or IGN carrier, it would be much easier to satisfy. What makes me disappointed about this is I very much want that cooldown, but it's probably not worth using Akagi or Kaga to do that. It's giving up basically a backline slot to do it. And that skill alone would have allowed me to at least try her in PvP. Without it, she is not going to be used for PvP. And I know most people don't care about that. You want to care about your meta fight or your late game boss fights. And she's going to be a great boss ship. It looks like, but to me, it's just disappointing that she is so close to being, you know, maybe testable in PvP, and but she's not. Overall, I think this is actually a disappointing ship in uh, a few ways, actually. One of the ways is just her role. Obviously, she has no PvP sense, which given that 
the original Amagi was like the dominant form of PvP. That was sad to me. But also, even if you're talking about boss fleets, where do you put her, right? She doesn't power creep Hakuryu in damage. Shinano has very different buffs that are more broad and easier to qualify for. And then you're like, oh, maybe you could put her with Hakuryu and Shinano. Well, are you going to give up the Soya's buff? Or are you going to give up the slow from Implacable? Like, she doesn't have a slow, so she can't take over Implacable if you need the slow. She is not necessarily going to be doing as good as a Soyez because Soyez is got battleship stuff that benefits like auxiliary guns and she's going to give those buffs that she gives. Additionally, you know, Amagi's buffs here are only to torpedo damage, not necessarily the whole thing. So Shinano is buffing all of your IJN carriers where she's only going to buff your IJN ship's torpedo bombers. She does get to buff the front line, so that's an advantage. You can run a torpedo front line, give her a buff there. But there's a lot of things here where it's like, it's very hard to justify fitting her into this fleet. Like maybe you run a triple CV when you run her at Kiryu Shinano, but there just seems to be like, I don't know. I, I feel like she could get lost. I feel like if you have a Fate 5, I've simulated her cure you she's just i don't know you guys tell me in the comments where you want to fit her in your fleets and such because that's kind of where i'm coming from with this perspective that i feel disappointed by this ship because i i just don't have an exact spot that she goes not that she's going to be bad not that you can't use her not that she's not very close to some of those other carriers you're already using but she doesn't really like take a new slot she doesn't take over anybody she's i don't know you guys let me know because i appreciate it i think this on top of the fact that i I'm not as much of a fan of her art as the original version of the art here. This makes me a little disappointed by this ship, especially after we've waited this long for her to come home. I don't know. Maybe my perspective is skewed by the fact that I really like Amagi, but we have to move on because I've talked about Amagi way too long in this video so far. Next up, we have the SR Battlecruiser He Meta. I don't like having meta ships as part of the gotcha, but here we are. She is also going to be the ship that you can gain for free from the shop, or she can drop from D3. Right off the bat, I see that she got a healthy stat boost here. Her efficiencies are still the same as the base version, but a stat boost is always helpful. We're starting off on the right foot here. Skill number one, she gets plus 15% firepower and reload stat. All right, what's not to like about that? Also, every 20 seconds, she triggers a special barrage and triggers one of the following things. If there are two or more enemies on the field, she triggers a slashing barrage. Otherwise, she's going to give her next main gun salvo plus 20% damage dealt. Very solid skill here. No complaints. Skill number two, every 20 seconds, there's a 70% chance to trigger radiance for 10 seconds. While radiance is active, this ship redirects 50% of all damage taken by the main fleet to herself, reduce damage taken this way by 20%, and random enemy gets minus 10% evasion rate. Okay, that's interesting. It doesn't trigger automatically, so a little sad, but that's fine. It is every 20 seconds, so a little bit late for her firing for the evasion rate reduction. It is random too, so if there are multiple enemies, you can't really guarantee it. The redirect damage is something that we've been seeing more of. Obviously, South Dakota came up with that skill initially. It's not a bad skill per se, but he meta doesn't have a huge HP pool where this is fantastic. Also, if Radiance fails, so this is 30% chance of happening, the Vanguard fleet gets plus 15% evasion stat and reload stat for 10 seconds. So at least you're getting some benefit. All right, this skill's decent. Moving on to skill number three, minus 15% HE and burn damage taken. That's nice. All other main fleet ships get minus 10% damage taken. That's really nice. When this ship drops below 30% HP, heal 8% of her max HP and 15% to her anti-air and evasion stats for the rest of the battle. This triggers once per battle. This is also really good. 30% is a little lower, but it's a good heal. 8% is good. She's got damage reduction from HE and burn. She gets damage reduction for everyone else. Great skill again. And of course, she gets a force skill because she is a meta ship. She gets plus 8% crit damage when fighting an elite or boss fleet in the Operation Siren. Overall, this ship is decent. I'm just not that excited about meta ships, and that's a me problem. There's nothing wrong with this ship other than the fact that it is an SR in a world where URs dominate now because rare power creep still the sr battle cruiser so take that with a grain of salt but as far as the kit goes i think they did a very good job making this usable useful interesting it's just not necessarily top tier 
That's that is never going to really be top tier, but it is interesting. So I got to give them credits for that. All right, let's move on to our other SR, a light cruiser Watarase. This is a paper ship, sadly. It's supposed to be in a Gano class or an upgraded Agano class or something like that, which makes a lot of sense when I tell you that her stats look very similar to Noshiro or Sakawa. Skill number one reads that she gets plus 15% hit stat and reload stat, which is going to be good if she's based on torpedoes. So we like that. If the flagship is IGN, she gets plus 15% damage dealt. When the flagship launches an attack, either an airstrike or the main gun trigger, she triggers a special barrage that has a five second cooldown. So that's more for manual play if you like save up some airstrikes or something like that. This barrage is HE ammo. It has priority target. It ignores shields. So everything that we really like. Overall, the skill looks really good. The IJN flagship damage dealt is great. That's going to pair really well with a Magi CV too. They're going to like double buff there. So good first start here. Skill number two, plus 10% evasion rate. That sounds really good and it is, but Noshiro has plus 15% evasion rate. So worse than that. If there is an enemy within 30 units of her, she triggers a special barrage. 30 units is kind of close to be honest. It has a 10 second cooldown between activations. And when this ship takes 8 instances of damage, she heals 5% of her max HP once per battle. Well, this skill is not that good. I don't know. I mean, she, she feels like she got cheated on evasion rate. She could have been 15% very easily. 30 units is not very close. It's just another barrage. She's got a heal, but it's, I don't know. And then she has an all-out assault. That's it. That's her skills. I think overall, this ship has really funky conditions for triggering her special barrages. And her brushes are pretty decent, but... I don't look at this ship and be like, I want this ship over Noshiro. Noshiro is a very old ship already, a real ship already, and still isn't used that much. So I don't really see a great spot for this. I mean, yeah, we were going somewhere when we were talking about extra damage that she got to deal with an IGN flagship. But even with a Magi 2, I'd rather just run the standard IGN Torp fleet for the Vanguard. And she doesn't have a spot in that. So dud. All right, let's move on to the next light cruiser of today's event. This is the elite light cruiser Ayase. She is worse in literally everything except reload stat and anti-submarine stat from Watarase. So let's hope she's got a cool skill. I know that she has mines because I saw that in the live stream and Hawk was going crazy about it. So let's see about that. Skill number one, she gets a 20% boost to her torpedo and reload stat. Man, that is a boost. That is a big boost. Wow. Every 20 seconds, there is a 75% chance that she triggers a torpedo barrage. That's nice. Not guaranteed, but a lot of low rarity ships don't have them guaranteed. Skill number two, five seconds after the start of the battle, scatter mines across the battlefield, the mines damage skills on skill level. This is what Hawk was seeing during the live stream. It happens only once though. Also, when the ship drops below 20% max HP, she heals 15% max HP once per battle. Additionally, she has an all out assault. So this ship is very basic. The mines are kind of cool. She does have some anti-submarine stat, but she's collection only that's for sure all right last but not least actually it's an elite destroyer so maybe least stat wise she's very much oriented toward torpedoes she's got some good efficiency she's got a very high torpedo stat she's very squishy that's expected but we are at least honed in on a specific niche so let's see if she has any good skills that make it decent. Skill number one, 15 seconds after the battle starts and every 20 seconds after that, she triggers a special barrage. Enemies hit by this barrage take 10% more torpedo damage from Suzunami for eight seconds. Great. Those are also decent timings because of how long torpedoes take to reload. So we like that. When this ship's torpedoes hit an enemy, slow that enemy by 40% for five seconds. So she's got a slow. Oh my gosh, she has torpedoes that are slow so already useful somewhat skill number two she gets plus 15 percent torpedo stat she already has a good torpedo stat and plus 15 percent evasion stat great she needs the survivability definitely she's squishy when this ship fires her torpedoes 30 percent chance to launch a second wave of torpedoes all right so she can get double waves all those torpedoes can have the slow all those torpedoes are going to be yeah, having extra damage if the barrage hits who it needs to hit honestly and then she 
also has an all out assault. Honestly, this ship is one of the better torpedo elite destroyers we've seen in a while. It's still very squishy. There are still best in slot versions of this that she doesn't have, but she is unique with the slows and the double waves of torpedoes. 30% chance is too low to really count on it to do much, but the ship is definitely better than some of the other ships we've seen in this event she's definitely not the worst ship that's for certain she made it better than that all right this is a long video we talked a lot we didn't even do equipment today and it's still gonna be a long video i spent a lot of time on amagi i can't help but say that this was one of the japanese anniversaries that i was the most excited about coming out of the live stream and i might be the most disappointed in coming out of the data mine i did did not feel like they did really any of the ships justice here i think he meta was probably the closest one but it's a meta ship for a ship that i don't particularly like and it's still not meta relevant so i consider it a wash i think amagi's art was disappointing it's worse than the base art also because it's amagi cv instead of amagi 2 we're not able to share skins so i can't use any of the other skins that i like better for amagi on her i think her kit is clunky she has one less plane than every other carrier in the game yes she has the highest efficiencies of the other carriers and that somewhat compensates for that and her being IGN means that she'll be able to get buffs like Shinano and you know she'll be up there right she's not unusable that's for certain but her kit doesn't also seem like it's doing something in a specific role I, she doesn't have a slow she focuses on burn damage but no way to give burn her all sorts of things I don't know she does have torpedo bombers so I guess that's the thing she probably is the best torpedo bomber carrier in the game but but she almost certainly has to be paired with Shinano to be, you know, where you want to be. But at the same time, if you do that, you're giving up either a slow, you're giving up a cooldown reduction, or you're giving up Harkiri, which she's probably going to do more damage. So I don't know where she fits. I can ramble all over. I think I would have liked to see more from Amagi from the skin perspective, from the implementation of her to the kit and everything. So anyway, that doesn't mean I'm not going to try and pull for her. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry, I don't mean to be a bummer. I hope you guys enjoy the event. It is a three week event. So you got some extra time and I'm looking forward to the tempestive and that comes next <laughs> that's for sure and two love rue seems like it's going to be a great event too so those two look fun and we'll see the next you are in december thank you guys for watching take care i'll see you guys next time